Hey guys, welcome back to another Kubernetes video. Today I'll be talking about the controller manager and I'll be going into a little bit of depth on how controllers work. So let's get going. Um, an overview. So to begin with, all controllers work with the concept of a control loop. So a classic example of a control loop is um, a heating system in a house. So if you set your uh, thermostat to a particular uh, temperature that you want to keep your house at then that will detect the current temperature if it falls below the desired temperature that will trigger the heating system that will in turn warm the house up when the house reach, reaches uh, the desired temperature the heating system will, will then be disengaged that's a, a very kind of uh, classic example of a control loop but Kubernetes controllers all run um, using a control loop. They want to reconcile the desired state that we as a user have specified with the actual state that the cl cluster is currently in. The controller manager itself is a bundle of Kubernetes controllers and each controller tracks a resource type. So. Uh, one example of a controller is replica set. So a replica set will track a set of pods. And controller reconciles the des desired state with the actual state, as I mentioned. Controller manager controllers. So you can see on the right hand side here uh, a list of the controller manager controllers. This is not an exhaustive list or more, but if you want to find the list of controller manager controllers you can execute this command here first you'll have to find the name of the pod that is running the controller manager so you can just run kubectl get pods in this namespace cube system and maybe grep for a controller manager or something like that but when you run this you will see the full list of controllers that the controller manager itself is running there are a, a number of non-controller manager controllers. So for example, uh, Kubelet is considered a controller for pods. Kubelet itself is what provisions the pods and the internal requirements of the pod. Operators are controllers for custom resources. So let's say we want to extend the Kubernetes API uh, we want to add our own type of Kubernetes resources, then we will define a custom resource and then we will write an operator that will control that custom resource. And the operator is simply uh, another controller that operates outside of the controller manager. We can also categorize our controllers into built-in versus external controllers. So built-in controllers are just controllers that manage their resources via the API server. An example of that would be a job controller. So with a built-in controller, all of the actions required to manage the resources that we're managing uh, are contained inside the cluster. We don't have to go anywhere external to, uh, you know, provision anything or do any work. With an external controller, these are controllers that manage an external resource. So you can imagine the node controller needs to uh, be in contact with some, potentially a cloud provider or our own, um, it has to have access to our own, um, physical infrastructure in order to provision new nodes when required. Now we're going to look into how uh, controllers work a little bit under the hood. The first concept we're going to talk about is informers. These watch objects for desired and actual state. They send instructions to reconcile the actual state and they store information in a local cache. So when we are setting up controllers, we need to check the state of the cluster regularly in order to 
understand what our current state is so that we can reconcile it with our desired state. So in order to prevent that becoming a, a unwieldy burden on the cluster, because as, as uh, the deployments in our cluster grow, we will have to uh, make more and more of these requests at regular intervals. Informers set up a local cache and this, uh, you know, it pulls the API server itself rather than the controller doing that um, whenever it needs the information. It just pulls the information at a slightly less uh, frequent pace and that reduces the load on the API server. However, if each controller had an informer itself, um, the potential here is to create conflicts in terms of the information stored within the informer. So mul multiple controllers can actually um, manage the same resource. So if we're using different local caches that may conflict for the same resource, we're gonna likely run into um, conflict issues when applying uh, changes to that resource. So the, the shared informer fixes this issue by implementing a shared cache that multiple controllers can uh, use. Now we're going to look at the informer or shared informer components. The first one is the reflector. This is the component that is responsible for essentially polling the API server and feeding uh, the events that it finds into the next uh, component, which is Delta FIFO, which is a queue to store the resource events. And then we have um, Indexer, which is the actual uh, local store or cache itself. So, so I'd imagine this is potentially a new concept for a lot of people. So just to run over that again, the reflector pulls from the API server, feeds events into the queue, which is Delta FIFO, and that is stored in the local cache called the indexer. Now, when we receive these events, there are a set of different functions that will be executed uh, by our controller based on the type of event that occurs. So on add is when a new resource is added. On update is when we make an update to that resource. And on delete is when uh, a resource is deleted. So each of these functions will have logic that is written by the person who has developed the controller and it will specify exactly what needs to be done when each of these types of events an add update or delete event uh, is fed into our index into our informer now let's look at that uh, in the form of a diagram and hopefully it will all come together so so First of all, we have our API server where we can retrieve all of the current information on the cluster. The reflector pulls from the API server to pick up new events that may have occurred. These events are fed into our queue, Delta FIFO, and then stored in our local store. The events are also passed to our functions on add on update, on delete, depending on the type of function, uh, we will execute different logic within those. As the events occur, the functions are passed into a work queue and we have a pool of worker threads that pull from the work queue and execute the functions. And then using clients that can communicate with the API server, we execute our reconciliation steps that we've defined within any of these functions. And that is essentially the full loop of how a controller works. I hope that was useful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment and I will certainly get back to you. Please like and subscribe and I will talk to you in the next video.